Snow Tracks is sponsored by Polaris, Think Outside, Yamaha, Revs Your Heart, FXR Racing, celebrating 25 years of speed, and by iPone Lubricants, exclusively distributed by Parts Canada. In 2021 marks the 25th anniversary of FXR Racing, and I've been working with this company since day one, first with Supertrax Magazine, then when I raced Snowcross with Lester Brothers Racing, and finally today at Snowtrax TV. Over the course of those 25 years, FXR's founder, Milt Reimer, has become much more than just a business associate. I would consider him a friend, and I can honestly say there are very few people in this industry as passionate and dedicated as Milt. So it was an enormous struggle, and but over a course of two, three, uh, two years of development, and the development, I right away started noticing a big difference when I was racing, when I could add venting and very lightweight product and really realized, because I was doing mostly cross country and then some ice Le Mans, but they were usually hour long events, but you really had to be cold on the starting line and, and uh, get your hands to survive that. And, uh, but then the intensity of the race would quickly bring your body temperature up very rapidly and, and you would now have to be able to control that uh, by the layers you wore and the kind of venting you were putting through. Milt himself used to race snowmobiles and each season he puts big miles on his own fleet of sleds. I guess you could say that his focus on building the world's best snowmobile gear is just a little bit selfish. I say that in jest, but the truth is he's not just building it for us, he is building it for himself as well. This is exactly why FXR products have always worked exactly how we, as riders, want them to. Milt doesn't just design gear, he's also a diehard snowmobiler just like you and me. On top of all that, he has also surrounded himself with employees who are just as dedicated to developing the best riding gear possible as he is. And I think this really shines in the functional designs, unique innovations, and technology that is used to make FXR gear. The idea for FXR came to Milt back in his racing days. As a racer, he realized no one was making functional gear designed specifically for the unique needs of snowmobile racers. Milt decided that if no one else was gonna do it, he would. So he sat down in his garage and began designing and building prototype snowmobile race gear. Because he was a racer, it didn't take him long to come up with the designs that solved problems he himself had identified during his time on the track. The gear worked, other riders wanted it, and thus, FXR was born. Obviously, over the years, the product selection has grown to include not just snowmobile race gear, but trail and mountain gear, casual wear, motocross gear, and most recently, snowboard outerwear and clothing specifically designed for fishermen both summer and winter. The trail and mountain gear is really the backbone of the company though. The number of riders from all over the world who want high quality and highly functional riding gear and are therefore choosing FXR is growing by the day. FXR selection now includes literally every piece of clothing that you need to ride in any condition. But the question that I think has the most interesting answer is this, why does FXR gear work so well? And the answer is innovation and technology. Outerwear materials are changing on what seems like a daily basis. It would be a huge mistake to assume that all snowmobile gear is simply Gore-Tex with insulation. That couldn't be farther from the truth. Materials and technologies like Omni Stretch Trilaminate, Hydrix Pro, Thermal Flex, ACMT, FAST, Dry Vent, Thermal Dry, Dry Link, these are just some of the innovations that make FXR outerwear so comfortable and functional. Snow Tracks is brought to you by the regions of Quebec by the sea. Discover our ride ideas. Obviously, protecting a rider from the cold and keeping them dry is the first and most basic function of outerwear in general. But FXR has also developed some new technologies and designs that are focused more on safety. FAST, or Flotation Assist Safety Technology, is an insulation developed by FXR to keep you above the surface if you ever end up in the water and help keep you warm when you get out. 
Its ability to insulate when dry, float when you're in the water, then drain water when you get out makes suits equipped with this technology some of the safest in the industry. And FXR has even gone to the extremes of making sure every kid's suit they sell is equipped with fast flotation. Other technology is focused on keeping you dry. Drylink is a system that allows you to zip your jacket to your pants, thus creating a barrier that stops snow dust from going up your back when you're riding in deep snow. Still other technology is focused on comfort and convenience. The BOA lacing system used on many of FXR's high-end boots allows for quick and easy entry and exit and extremely precise adjustment for a perfect fit and all-day comfort. My personal favorite is the Helium Dual BOA. With a dual BOA system, I can have a nice tight fit over the top of my foot, but a looser fit around my shin so I can still walk. I have to say one of the best technologies to come out of FXR in the past few seasons is something that's not new. Others have tried it, but their systems simply didn't work properly. It's heated gloves. Because everyone at FXR rides sleds, the battery operated heated glove design they came up with works exactly how you want it to. The heating element is only on the back of the hand and fingers. This is because your snowmobile hot grips take care of heating your palm, so no element is needed there. The batteries fit in the cuff of the glove where you barely notice them, and the waterproof button shines either green, orange, or red to signify low, medium, or high. After three seasons of riding with my first pair of heated recon gloves, they still work perfect and are as warm and comfortable as they were on day one. The original batteries still work great, but I have three sets now so I can keep one on the charger, one set in the gloves, and one set in my pocket for the longest and coldest days. The battery-powered heat concept has now migrated from gloves to goggles. The Maverick e-goggle will keep your lens fog-free without needing to be plugged into the sled, and that is sweet. As I said in the beginning, FXR was born on the racetrack and the first FXR products were for racers. Since then, FXR has been heavily involved in snowmobile racing of every kind. Their support of the industry's top racers and racing series has not only given FXR an extremely high profile in the industry, but through the feedback of the riders, it's helped develop better products year after year. But Milt's dedication to racing and racers is best showcased by his sponsorship of the mobile medical unit that travels between snowcross races in the US and provides immediate medical attention to riders injured on the track. The benefits of this were twofold. First, it was a tangible way for FXR to give something back to the racing community that has been supporting him. And second, it gave Milt the ability to build safer riding gear by observing injuries sustained on the track and designing products that would help to prevent them. This was great for racers, but did it actually benefit trail riders and mountain riders as well? You bet it did. Just like with race sleds, the technology developed on the track inevitably made the gear that you and I wear on the trail and the mountain better as well. For 25 years, Milt Reimer and the whole crew at FXR has worked tirelessly to provide snowmobile riders of all kinds with the most functional, durable, and best looking gear in the industry. For everyone at FXR, this is way more than just a job. This is a passion. What does the future hold for FXR? Simply looking back at the past and then to where they are today is proof that Milt has no intentions of letting off the throttle. More innovation, more technology, and even better products are what FXR is all about. So I can only imagine what the next 25 years will bring. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. Being ready to tackle your sled maintenance and repairs doesn't just happen. I mean, you may have the technical know-how, but you're gonna need the tools to get the job done. Getting those parts ahead of time for specific repairs may be tough, but there are a good amount of general items that will come in handy for service and general repairs, as well as making your shop space way more functional for not just sled projects, but everything from your pickup truck to your lawnmower and ATV or motorcycle as well. Today I'm going to show you a selection of tools that I keep handy for the basics around the shop. I sourced all of these parts from Princess Auto, and you can as well online or in store. So first things first, we're talking shop, but specifically it's winter time and we work on sleds, and most folks do that work inside of a shop. Moving your sled around can be a pain, so dolly wheels are a must have. They let you move your sled anywhere you need it and not carve up your floor. 
Now working hand in hand with the dolly wheel setup is the adjustable track stand. This is key for running up your sled after repairs, but another favorite is leaving your sled on the track stand after a long day's ride. It keeps the track from freezing to the ground should you leave your sled outdoors. Now, when you're looking to lift the rear of your sled significantly higher, say to remove the rear skid frame or stud the track, you're gonna need something more than a track stand. Chain hoist like this one-ton triangle will do the job with ease. And as I was saying earlier, this will come in handy for all kinds of shop tasks. It's easy to operate and all you need is a solid overhead beam to mount to and you're set. I especially like this method as the other option is tipping your sled on the side and that causes fluids to leak and panels to get scratched. Plus it's more work and requires changing sides when you'd be removing skid frame bolts. Whether your sled's a two-stroke or a four-stroke, they all use oil. In some cases, you're gonna to need to change that oil, and we should all occasionally think about swapping out the chain case oil, as well as checking our coolant. For these tasks, you can go it with a cutoff windshield washer fluid jug and hope for the best, but if you've done this and found out the hard way, it can lead to a colossal mess. I always have on hand a drain container like this Flowtool 18 liter. It holds enough to do any fluid changes, and with a drain plug lets you dispose of the fluid cleanly afterwards. If you have a tough spot to drain or want to make life easier, fluid extractors like this 7.3 liter PowerFist version will draw any fluid out of just about anything that you can imagine. They also offer a pneumatic version, but with this simple pump design, it creates excellent draw and works flawlessly. When it's time to fill back up, it's important to make sure that you don't overfill, and this five liter poly flask with Flexi Filler from PowerFist will give you more confidence and also a bit more reach than just trying to pour from a bottle. But if you're really struggling, especially with the chain case filler, the Meju funnel with the extra long filler tube not only shows you exact measurements, it also has a quick turn on off and a cap for the end of the tube to keep you tidy and most importantly, keep your sled clean. Keeping with the theme of multi-seasonal shop tool versatility, I've found when working on snowmobiles, a stubby impact gun will fit places that a full size never will. The ProPoint half-inch composite stubby impact puts out 500 foot-pounds of torque, but it's super small and able to go places that others won't. Studying tracks is one place that I found this impact to really help, but interior skid frame bolts are also a pain with a full size, and this impact will show its versatility in more ways than you might think. Not just in the winter, but all year round. Now there are times when you just need that big impact power, and in the winter time, the stubby's gonna do most of those jobs, but when it comes down to it, there's no replacement for displacement. While its size is big, so is its air capacity and power. Pumping out 1,000 foot-pounds of capability, the ProPoint half-inch composite impact gets the job done from skid frame bolts to lug nuts on your truck to whatever you can think of that's stubborn and doesn't want to come off. This is a serious impact gun that delivers with proven capabilities. Another area I like to be prepared is the truck or trailer, especially in winter time, because getting stuck and dead batteries are all a part of the sport we call snowmobiling. For dead batteries, I like to have two things available. One, a really long set of booster cables like these 25 footers from Grip. They let me boost the four stroke sleds or a buddy's truck and are useful for 12 months of the year. On the flip side, sometimes you may need to get to a spot that even huge 25 foot cables won't go and a big 1200 amp super pack like this from Princess Auto will boost everything from a four stroke sled to a diesel pickup truck. And with the cables built in, as well as a USB charger, just in case you need a boost for your phone or other tech, you're completely covered. Now, as I stated earlier, getting stuck can also be a problem, and so having these power fist traction mats will give me a little extra grip should I find some soft snow or ice with the truck and trailer. But if it gets even worse, or I need to recover a buddy's truck or pull a sled out from a trail side breakdown, having straps like these 4,500 pound, 9,000 pound braking strength retractable Ericsson straps will let me do just that. At 15 feet and with a retractable spring-loaded bale, they collapse down small enough to throw in the trunk of your sled or under the seat of your truck and I've never had a time where I've regretted having a toe strap. Being prepared with the right tools both in the shop and the truck when traveling is important, especially for us sledders who find ourselves in some pretty interesting and desolate places where being prepared is never a bad idea. Never in my life have I been more excited about a snowmobile ski than I am right now. Maybe I'm being a little dramatic, but 
For way too long, I've been testing fantastic Viper and Sidewinder snowmobiles with a long list of excellent traits that are almost entirely overshadowed by bad handling due to a ski that doesn't work on this chassis. But now, all of that is in the past because for 2021, all Viper and Sidewinder models get a brand new single keel ski Yamaha is calling the Strike. I'm sure you can already see where this is heading, but I'm gonna save talking about handling for the very end of this test ride to draw out the suspense about what I'm actually going to say. Let's start by talking about the sled we have right here. This is a 2021 SR Viper LTX GT. Basically, this is the comfiest Viper model Yamaha has in their US lineup and the only Viper model they have in their Canadian lineup. The LT in its name signifies its 137 inch skid frame and track, and the GT signifies the more comfort focused trim level. The GT includes things like a medium height windshield, heated seat, and 20 inch tunnel bag. Ergonomically, the LTX GT fits and feels just like all other trail based Sidewinder and Viper models. The handlebar position is excellent, and the switch gear is all easy to find and easy to use. I've said this quite a few times in the past, and I'll say it again now. The seat, while comfortable, is just a tiny bit too low. For a guy my size, I feel like it needs either one to two inches more foam on top or slightly firmer foam so I don't sink in so far. It's not a huge problem, but it's something to consider. Under the hood, you're gonna find Yamaha's much revered Genesis 1049cc triple that puts out a respectable 125 horsepower. This engine has developed a sort of cult following for a number of reasons, not the least of which is its smoothness. At idle, it simply purrs. It's so buttery smooth, it's almost calming to ride. The exhaust note is mellow, but pleasing. Clutch engagement on takeoff is perfect, and again, smooth as silk, not at all jumpy. All that smoothness, though, does a great job of masking the true potential of this three-cylinder mill. You'd better be ready when it's time to grab a mitt full of throttle, though, because the immediate surge of forward momentum is unlike anything in the industry. Mid-range is where this motor shines as bright as the sun, and it's interesting that when you hit the throttle at medium speeds, the clutches don't really feel like they backshift at all. It feels more like they grab the belt harder, and the unreal torque of the Genesis engine simply drives you forward with aggression. If you're getting the impression that I really like this engine, it's because I really do. Out back, you're gonna find Yamaha's SR137 skid frame with its sliding front arm and 13 inches of travel. The front arm is damped by a basic monotube gas shock, while the rear arm is damped by a sweet Fox 2.0 QS3. With the QS3 set to full soft, this skid frame offers one of the plushest rides in the industry. At slow to medium speeds, it literally erases small and medium sized bumps of all shapes and sizes. As speeds climb, it seems to get just slightly overwhelmed, especially as the bumps get bigger, but the ride is still more than comfortable and damping is easily tunable thanks to the QS3's ultra simple three position compression clicker. I do have two gripes about this skid frame setup though. First, why not just include a QS3 on the front arm as well? It would improve the ride quality even further. And at the end of the day, this isn't a budget sled, so the small price increase would be entirely worth it. Second, while this skid definitely rides great, its aggressive coupling setup limits how playful the sled feels because it doesn't allow any rearward weight transfer when you get on the gas. Under hard acceleration, the sled stays completely flat and just launches forward. Over hills and bumps on the trail, the sled never wants to lift its nose for a bit of yee-haw, if you know what I mean. While perhaps not quite as playful as a skid frame that transfers more, the way this skid is set up definitely helps with handling by keeping the skis on the ground. I just wish there was a happy medium somewhere. Up front, the Viper LTX GT rides on Yamaha's ARCS wide space double A-arm suspension and is damped by a set of Fox 1.5 QS3s. This setup offers excellent ride quality in all conditions and precise and predictable handling now that it's paired with the new Strike single keel ski. I just can't say enough about how great this ski works. It's such a massive improvement over the old tuner ski in literally every area of handling. Turn in is precise and predictable. Bite in the corners is confidence inspiring and there's not even a hint of pushing. 
overall steering effort may be just slightly higher than the tuner ski, but there's not a person whose head sucks air that wouldn't gladly take a tiny bit more steering effort to get all the other benefits this ski provides. For years, all of us here at Snow Tracks have felt very strongly that the Viper is an underappreciated sled that offers excellent high mileage durability, above average performance, ease of use, and fantastic resale. Finally, I get to talk about all that without having to overshadow it with comments about poor handling. I can simply enjoy all the goodness that is a Yamaha Viper. And after putting big miles on this one, I can confidently say there is a lot of goodness to enjoy. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by MBRP Performance Exhaust, built for the Victory Lab, and by Arctic Cat Snowmobiles. If you enjoyed this video, there's two things you need to do right now. Make sure you click that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss any of our new uploads. We upload content every week and we wanna make sure you don't miss out on any of it.